get him back in black and gold this year because they are very thin up the middle. And if Devin Bush doesn't stay healthy, it would be a catastrophe to go into the season with what they have now behind him. Well, Melvin Ingram, this signing makes a little more sense now. I mean, he can play all over the place. He's done it before. Uh, potentially, maybe he moves inside. I want Melvin Ingram playing on the edge opposite T.J. Watt because I think he's the second best edge rusher on the team. So I really would not want to rob Peter to pay Paul there. Uh, I know that Alex Highsmith could be very capable at the position, but every time I think about Ingram playing inside, it's more as a down lineman, at least that's what we heard uh, from Lorenzo Neal a couple days ago on the PM team, was that he is, he's a guy who maybe plays more inside when he's actually down in a defensive lineman stance. I just, I don't see the harm, let's put it this way, Richie, I don't see the harm in at least looking for somebody to replace Vince Williams and not just expecting Melvin Ingram to sort of pull double duty here. All right, well, also, I mean, you have Malik Hooker out there. He's not quite a linebacker, but he can help uh, with the way defenses are, are, are formed nowadays and the way offenses are playing. I mean, a, a guy like Malik Hooker or Terrell Edmonds playing up might make more sense. I mean, Edmonds, I think, is going to do that for them a lot. I don't think they're going to go after Hooker, at least right now. I think they would wait to see how the chips fall and how some of these younger guys that they have back there perform in camp. At least that's what I would do if I were in their shoes. The one saving grace for them is that a lot of the teams they play are going to pass the ball enough that a guy like Vince Williams or even Robert Spillane maybe isn't going to get on the field uh, as much as they normally would, wouldn't play those traditional inside backer snaps. Having said that, Richie, what division do they play in? The AFC North. Yeah. What are, two, what are the two best teams in that division? And the Steelers are not one of them, sorry. What do mm. the Ravens and Browns love to do? Run the football and run it right at you, especially with the way Cleveland plays I would think you're going to need some bulk up the middle. You're going to need some guys who physically can stand up to what the Browns, I think especially in that more traditional power running game, want to do. And the one guy that, you know, transformed from a safety to a linebacker now is Marcus Allen. Now, I don't know how much he can help the team, uh, but I'm sure he's going to be vying for playing time. And, I mean, he has to do something at some point, right? Or that's a wasted draft pick from a few years ago. I mean, you said that name, and I just kind of shrugged my shoulders. You know, I just rolled I know. my eyes. I mean, we're grasping at straws here. That's, I'll go back and say it again. That's why Vince Williams retiring, even if they maybe had an inkling it was coming and maybe are going to ask Melvin Ingram to move around the field a little bit more, you can't just rely on one guy's positional versatility. That also, by the way, takes him away, again, from the best thing that he does, which is rush off the edge. You can't rely on that to patch the hole left now by Vince Williams' retirement. All right, the Steelers reported today. We'll continue the Steelers talk. Also, the expansion draft and the Penguins lost Brandon Tanov. We'll figure that out coming up next. And Jared McCann's gone too. I mean, the Steelers, I mean, the Penguins traded him a few days ago, but he was also selected by the Kraken. We're taking your phone calls coming up next. 412 575 2600.